In the words of DHS Secretary John Kelly, the United States is experiencing a, quote, unprecedented spike in homegrown terrorism. Currently, the FBI has opened terrorism investigations in all 50 States. As of June 2017, the U.S. Government has charged 128 individuals with offenses related to the Islamic State over the last three years. Radical Islamic extremism is the primary driver of this problem and deserves the government's immediate attention. In recent years, the Federal Government has sought to combat this problem under the guise of a program called Countering Violent Extremism, or CVE. Three cities were used to conduct pilot programs, Los Angeles, Boston, and Minneapolis. Minneapolis is a particularly troublesome area as it is a major center of Islamic terrorist activity. The region is home to the largest concentration of Somali refugees and has been the epicenter for domestic radicalization. From 2007 to 2015, over 20 Somali Americans are known to have left Minnesota to join the al-Shabaab terrorist organization in Somalia. Over the last three years, Federal prosecutors have charged 13 individuals from Minnesota for connections to the Islamic State. Minnesota is second only to New York, which has four times as many residents and the number of ISIS terrorists charged. The terrorist problem in Minnesota led former U.S. Senator Norm Coleman to warn that the state is in danger of becoming, quote, the land of 10,000 terrorists. Now, as the chairman of this subcommittee, I visited Minneapolis last December to meet with Federal and local law enforcement officials and community groups who were involved in the Countering Violent Extremism program. Uh, the area is obviously uh, a ground zero for recruitment. Now, I invited Richard Thornton, the FBI special agent in charge of the Minneapolis Division, to testify today about the problems uh, our country is facing in that part of the country. Uh, but he is not here. Instead, the Bureau has sent Assistant Director Kerry Sleeper from headquarters with the expectation he can speak to Thornton's specific experience and interactions in Minneapolis. I look forward to hearing specifics about the FBI's efforts in Minneapolis so the committee can evaluate the effectiveness of this CVE approach. Our law enforcement and intelligence community have their hands full with preventing radicalization and interdicting terrorists before they commit acts in the name of their ideology. The Department of Homeland Security leads the government's countering violent extremism efforts. CVE refers to proactive actions to counter efforts by extremists to recruit, radicalize, and mobilize followers to violence. Currently, the Department still follows the Obama-era policies related to CVE. And guidance developed during the Obama administration specifically limits any intelligence or law enforcement investigative activity through CVE. By leaving this information on the table, CVE efforts are potentially missing opportunities to identify and disrupt terrorist plots. Obama-era guidance also fails to, pro fails to properly identify uh, the threat of radical Islamic ideology. The nearly 4,000-word October 2006 CVE strategy does not even mention radical Islamic terrorism at all. The Obama administration strategy also relied heavily on nongovernmental organizations with vague and immeasurable goals. One week before President Trump's inauguration, former DHS Secretary Jay Johnson announced the grant recipients of $10 million appropriated by Congress for CVE efforts. The selections reflect a preference for working through community-based organizations, some with questionable programs and immeasurable goals. For example, the Obama administration selected for funding an organization who suggested countering violent extremism through, quote, collaborative songwriting, multimedia, and performance. Another suggested hiring college students to make video games. This was not a serious attempt to stop the flow of foreign fighters to ISIS. After President Trump took office, DHS froze the $10 million in grants, reviewed the organizations, and announced they were removing 11 Obama-era grant recipients, but adding six new ones. A committee review of the organizations indicates a preference for law enforcement organizations over community-based organizations. Now, despite this step, some of the law enforcement organizations designated for funding have questionable agendas. For example, the City of Houston's application relied on so-called community experts with vocally partisan and anti-Israel agenda. The, De the City of Denver submitted an application that prioritized an un agenda unrelated to CVE, suggesting working through organizations such as Black Lives Matter. The, community re uh, the committee requested the applications of all grant recipients to determine what taxpayer dollars were funding. The DHS has still not produced these applications, 
the committee requested a briefing on the rationale for the selection of the grant recipients, but DHS refused. Today, the subcommittee seeks to understand what this, this administration's policy is for countering violent extremism. According to DHS, this policy is currently under review, and DHS has declined to share any details about this process, including when this review is supposed to be complete and which organizations are participating. For Congress's immediate purposes, we must determine what is driving DHS's agenda, the assumptions of the Obama era about countering this threat, or the President's pledge to put political correctness aside and defeat the Islamic State at home and abroad. We will question witnesses on whether the FBI and DHS are properly vetting organizations and individuals who participate in the program. We will also hear from nongovernmental witnesses on the role of the private sector in CVE efforts and the scope of violent extremism problem facing the United States. I thank the witnesses for their attendance and look forward to their testimony. And I now recognize the ranking member of the subcommittee, Mr. Lynch, for his opening statement.